I started seeing the rounds of the exploits of the Canadian hacker. Mm -hmm. As Twitter blew up with people saying, I came into work today and on my printer was this printout. And the printout was from the Canadian hacker. He is the politest hacker that you'll ever meet. He will hack your devices and then apologize. <laughs> he is none other than the Canadian hacker. Hey there, how's it going? Fantastic. How about yourself? I'm not doing too bad. Yeah. Not too bad at all. Yeah. Listen, you, you call yourself the Canadian hacker. Just to give us a sense of the scale of things, how many, how many devices have you seriously hacked? I mean, I've hacked about 150 devices. How many devices have you hacked? Well, for the printers, I've hacked 100,000 of them. <laughs> 100,000 printers. Yeah. Why'd you hack printers? Well, m my mo main motivation for doing all this was to give myself more of a challenge uh, without really affecting the people around me. Um, and when you say that, when you say without affecting, are you talking about being benign in your attacks so that you're not actually yeah. creating damage? You're, yeah, you're just being more of like a black hat hacker. That's not what I want to go over, right? Like Fair more ethical hacking would be something that I want to do and is what I did with the printers. Mm -hmm. And I saw the printers as a very open target. Uh, especially with how many, like everybody in your own, everybody's home has a printer, right? Mm -hmm. um, every business has a printer. Uh, and a lot of people don't look at them for something that you could exploit, right? Hmm. So then you're, uh, you, you create a pretty big vulnerability right there. So my, my whole uh, thing was to create a challenge for myself while not um affecting others in a bad way i guess you could say right yeah i got you good on you good on you how'd you get started hacking well around uh seven years old i actually you know what that's actually a really good question here sorry i'm just um thinking about my timeline i guess <laughs> <laughs> well yeah, I'd say probably around six or seven. Like, um, I guess there's there's a point in in your like you're growing up in an era, unlike I did. So yeah. when I was when I was in high school is when I realized, hey, I can hack systems and I can mm -hmm. make them do what I want them to do. There must have been a point in your life where you said, hey, I can do more than what Windows allows me to do, what Linux allows me to do. What yeah. when was that point for you? Probably around 10 or 11, I'd say, mm -hmm. when I started, um, when a lot of people on the internet started coming out and showing uh, to the public, like, what you can do with this and how everything can be explained. And I thought, huh, like, <laughs> you know, I can do that, right? Um, and I wanted to learn that ability, uh, more so for good than bad, right? Okay. Yeah. So probably around 10 or 11, yeah. And, uh, and these devices, you mentioned printers, and we're going to talk more about that, but these devices are benign, considered safe. These are, these are devices that people trust to plug into their network. I mean, you walk into any super center, you buy a printer and you install it and it just works. Yeah. What is it that drew you to start attacking those devices? Well, I would say it's more of a, um, or giving me a little bit easier of an access or than a more sophisticated system. So it was easy enough for me to do, but um, hard enough for me to still have a challenge. Yeah. And there was a large amount of them, like a surplus of, of uh, printers on uh, any given network. So, you know, you're, uh, I have a lot of access to them and it, uh, made it a little bit easier sorry i'm kind of gone off track there but uh, no not at all not at all so but it makes me think though and we're speaking with the canadian hacker here the canadian hacker we we know you by no other name um when you're attacking printers so so i think as a cons so me as a consumer or our viewers as consumers will purchase a printer and just install it on their network so what makes that device 
a vulnerable device. You just think it's a benign device just sitting on your network that you print to. Well, it's like, go ahead. How are we able to attack that? How? What is? What is it that I should know as a consumer that you can share with me as a as a hacker that I should know about that printer being connected to my network? Well, all devices have a form of like security feeder, I guess you can say. Um, you might think that they're safe when they're really truly not. And for printers in this case, um, there's a lot of open ports on your network that uh, it can be accessed with, which I don't mean that you don't, you shouldn't connect it to your network. I mean, it makes it so much easier to print anything off, but you just have to be really careful with what's exposed because um, there's uh, ports 9100, 515 and 631, which are the main three ports that, um, and it's mainly 9100. That 631, people, isn't that cups? Yeah, that's yeah. cups. So you got to be really, really careful with um, what you're exposing. Um, and you just always got to be watching out with what you're installing to your network, what you're adding to your network. Because I could yes, I could get into that printer. And um, if I wanted to attack it for malicious reasons, uh, let's say you're a large business, I could, anything you print off, finance reports or anything, I would actually be able to uh, use a man in the middle attack and take it off. So, oh, or, man. so you really have to be careful with what you're putting or connecting to your network. And you should always be checking um, your settings on your uh, modem or, I mean, more people know it as a router, but it's really a modem, right? Um, uh, to see what ports you're allowing to pass through to the external side of your network. And that makes me think, now the Canadian hacker, you're, you're dropping a bunch of bombs here, so I got to cut you off because like, okay, we got to talk about this. UPnP is enabled on a lot of routers. Yeah. U, UPnP means as soon as you plug that printer in, it opens up the ports. It doesn't matter if you specifically said open up those ports. No, UPnP will automatically do that because it detects the new printer and allows it to open those ports automatically. That's yeah. dangerous. That's what I'm learning here. But you're talking about, okay, not only are you able to send print jobs to my printer, but you're able to intercept the print jobs that I send to my printer. Exactly, yeah. And you can see how dangerous that is, right? Oh, um, oh and, a yeah. of, and a lot of the security features on printers that say like, oh yeah, um, they won't be saved on the system or anything like that, um, really don't help at all. Because it's not, it's again, a form of security feeder. You're really thinking it's more safe than it truly is. I can't help but think about accounting firms, lawyers' yeah. offices, who just, okay, let's back up a second. The Canadian hacker has revealed themselves to the world and said, look, your printers are unsafe. You need to secure these things. What if there are 10 other hackers who have accessed that printer and have never even unveiled the fact that they have access to that printer? Is yeah. there, isn't it true, the Canadian hacker, that they could compromise this printer and be receiving every single print job from this lawyer's office, from this accounting office, from wherever this office is, and never, you'd never be the wiser. You'd just be sending them this information. Is that a valid point? It's a very valid point, and that is very true. Um, of course, I've never necessarily seen that in action, but it is definitely in the realm of possibilities. Um, you know, if you have anything that's open to the network, open to your network, um, there's IP crawlers that can uh, go through every single IP address in the world and will tell you exactly what ports there are. And then, um, for example, sites like Shodan uh, or uh, hostels, like they show them online, and then anybody with the malicious intent, like the people you said or that you stated, uh, can use that to um, or uh, create man in mill attacks or copy off any files, permanently damage your printer, or just do mostly anything to your printer. 
Unreal. Uh, speak now. Getting away from printers, are there other devices that we as consumers may pick up, whether they be from a retailer or from, say, our internet service provider, that would allow us to be compromised without us even thinking about the security aspect of it? Oh, there are tons. Um, a really big example that I personally found in. I was that I actually experienced myself in my own home mm -hmm. was um, a certain ISP company that I'm not going to state, uh, but I would say a major ISP in Canada. Uh, what did install a modem in my own home that replaced my past modem, uh, and it actually opened up the web interface to the public, and uh, these. And it had a standard like username and password, like admin no, password, right, like a so, default like admin password. <laughs> yeah. Oh my exactly. goodness. So and so many people don't understand that this is such a huge issue. Yeah. Um, and they like I haven't contacted them about it. Um, I probably should, and I most likely will in the future, mm -hmm. but. You really have to be careful with what you're installing onto your network because, uh, especially with that, like that did send a bit of a shock. Yeah. Um, uh, because with that, anybody could log into my modem. Yeah. Um, and then you could do more basic things like reset it or uh, power it off, but then it also gives you more access to your network than you should ever have. Like well, anybody, a modem or a router would allow me to open up, say, port 3389 yeah. on the network, which would exactly. allow me as a hacker to remotely access your computer desktop and yeah. wreak all kinds of havoc. What, what, other kinds of, what other kinds of threats does this introduce to our network? I mean, these are devices that we trust. So the internet service provider says, here's your new modem. It's going to be faster. It's going to be better. Yeah. And you don't ever think twice about the security of that device. What what does it open up to a hacker such as yourself? Now I understand that you're taking the you're taking the high road and saying you know I'm going to educate people. But what about those hackers that are saying no? I'm going to exploit people. With uh, there, <laughs> that's a very good question. I'm just going to put that right out there. Um. It is truly astonishing what you can do when you have access to these systems. Yeah. Um, like you said, I mean, I believe that's RDP port, if I'm correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, for example, that one, you would most likely tap, need to have that one enabled, but there's so many exploits with this and with a modem, uh, you know, you'll be able to, in most cases, you can see what is installed on the network. Uh, and then you have, and it'll show the specific IP address and you can find vulnerabilities in like CVE, for example, right? Oh. Um, like a CVE database and it, it can say, Oh yeah, um, this, uh, thermostat, let's just say a thermostat, you know, IOT thermostats. This thermostat has this vulnerability that hasn't been patched yet and you can access it using this or this port and jack up the temperature or kill it or damage the thermostat. And then you can, uh, because you have access to the modem, you can open that port so you can access it yourself, even if you weren't able to before. Can I and just put something out there? Because you touched on thermostats here, the Canadian hacker. I could also, as a hacker, monitor that thermostat and see when the people are coming and going. So then it brings it into a physical realm of saying, okay, well, my Nest thermostat tells whoever has access to it, whether I'm home or not. Yeah. So what if I was a physical robber? Yeah. It's definitely a scary world with that, with all of that. Um, for example, a lot of people have smart locks, right? Yeah. Um, and a lot of them communicate through Zigbee, for example. Mm -hmm. Now you have a, um, like this hub, a central hub that connects all of those systems together. And if you don't have that set up properly, or if they didn't uh, correct any security issues that they saw present, uh, that would allow you access to, for example, unlock your door uh, through Yikes. the network. 
Um, and it's really bad because they, um, a lot of systems don't use any authentication with that. I mean, there are some that do, uh, but yeah, with like one of those smart hubs, you know, it's just like if you were ha- to have your phone out, you could press a button on your phone and it would unlock the door. Yeah. Well, why can't somebody else that has access to your modem do the same thing, right? Mm. So that's an interesting up- thought. Yeah. Never even really thought. And we we're always thinking in terms of, you know, the, the actual app. Well, if I have access to the modem, I can access any of the devices within the same yep. network. That's scary stuff. Well, we're speaking with the Canadian hacker. And before we take a quick break, let's have a look at a video of how the Canadian hacker was able to compromise all those printers. The Canadian hacker is not only going to be sharing with us about the response that he's received to the printer hack, but also he's going to share his concerns about how young people could use similar hacks to damage devices around the world and how governments could use it for cyber espionage. Don't go anywhere. Jumping back to your own hack of printers across Canada, the U.S., and even uh, overseas, um, what is the response that you've received? Like, have you have you gotten a lot of feedback from that hack? Yes, I have. So, with the attack or the hack, um, I added my uh, Twitter handle. Yeah, I saw that. As well as my email address. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, the majority of the feedback has been positive, and a lot of people actually contacted me to help aid with the problem. uh, And a lot of older folks too. I don't know how to do this. Can you help me? Wow. And I, and you, you know, you can go step by step with it, right? Mm -hmm. But then there are some other people which I don't necessarily know their motives. But I have brought in actually a few death threats from um, Russia, which is why you can see me unmasked here in this uh, show. Is it possible the Canadian hacker, uh, and we don't like to get into politics or (laughs) any of that kind of stuff here on Category 5, but is it possible that they're utilizing these exploits and you are educating the people to these exploits? You know what? I've actually never thought of that. And that is a very good view, I guess. So, do you um, think that is yeah. a possibility? That is very much so a possibility, yes. And I could be showing, by doing this, I could be showing the public uh, things that maybe those people who sent those threats oh, sure. uh, would want to see. Uh, yeah, that's a very, very good point. How do you think the CIA felt when Eternal Blue was revealed publicly <laughs> you know <laughs> no. i don't know what happened to those hackers we yeah. just nobody knows um so looking at so this is uh, the canadian hacker that we're speaking with and, and and we joke but the truth is is that 
the Canadian hacker has taken a very uh, higher road approach to these types of exploits. And in your actual printout, so understand hundreds of thousands of printers around the world suddenly started printing out this printout from this hacker. And on this printout, it says, if you are unable to find suitable instructions, you are welcome to contact me via email or Twitter, and I'll be glad to help you out. You mentioned some older folks reaching out. Like, have you really received folks reaching out and saying, I need help with this? Yes, I have. Um, the majority of the emails I've received were people thanking me, uh, which I wasn't necessarily looking for that uh, through the email or anything like that. but. Uh, it was more to provide a support system to help people with that. And yes, I've received multitudes of emails uh, stating that they required help um, and their company uh, hasn't told them or they don't know how to, uh, things like that. And I can provide a step-by-step -step process. And then there's also some people, some people that don't necessarily know how I did the exploit but they know how to fix the problem and they've contacted me to test it again to make sure that their printer isn't accessible. Oh, fantastic. Okay. So uh, are you going to continue hacking printers in this way? Oh, most definitely. Um, I am going to be sending out another wave of an unidentified amount. They're not an unidentified but I don't know how many printers I'll be sending this out to. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm thinking maybe 500,000. Uh, so that will be a much larger amount of printers that I sent it to before, but also, sorry, I'm kind of lost myself there. Really no, that, no, you're, um, you're fantastic. And, and we appreciate your time so very much. The Canadian hacker, so many hackers would utilize these types of exploits. For example, I mean, you're talking about sending, you've already sent to over a hundred thousand printers printout jobs okay uh and now we're talking about the next wave being another five hundred thousand printers where a lot of hackers would just like hey let's print out a mass amount of porn on all these business printers let's like print out some some horrible things this is you know the approach of the traditional hacker and this is how uh, i think media has painted the hacker so we have this picture of what a hacker is and that's what we expect of them. What has caused you to take a different approach and instead send to 600,000 printers instructions and assistance with helping to close these exploits? Well, I, I would always want to take the high ground or the moral route. Um, I have never thought, or not, not necessarily thought, but never um, ever wanted to uh, hack any devices uh, for immoral purposes or um, to do it for reasons of my own uh, that personally wouldn't like necessarily aid them. So I think it was just... I wanted to be able to make a difference in something without necessarily hurting uh, the persons involved. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much about it. Sorry. Like, you, <laughs> you, you live up to the, the, the handle of the Canadian hacker by apologizing, but what, <laughs> what you're revealing to us. I, I just envision like a new world of philanthropy in a way. Like as a hacker, you're choosing to help others by exploiting the very things that are exploitable within their networks. So you're saying, hey, by the way, <laughs> your printers could be used for these malicious purposes, but I want to yeah. help you to lock those down. Exactly. And of course, I didn't have to do that. If I wanted to, I could um, or completely destroy those printers by writing the EEP ROM over and over and over again, uh, which takes about tw 24 hours, and that would completely kill the printer. Uh, I could do that. I could print off uh, some images that you wouldn't necessarily want to be printed off. Yeah. Um, things like that. I could uh, permanently etch 
like a watermark onto it. Um, but not necessarily text. You could do anything you wanted, any image. Uh, but yeah, I've chosen to, you know. Oh, I'm just picturing all the, all the things that you could do, but you're choosing the high road. Dude, kudos and, and, and well done. Um, do you have plans, you know, stepping away from the, so the printer hack has been a successful hack and, and you've been making a difference for those who receive it and realize, oh my goodness, my printer is exploitable, but this hacker has chosen to, to tell me about it so that I'm no longer susceptible. What, what do you have planned beyond that? So when this has exhausted itself, what's the next step for the Canadian hacker? Well, I've kind of take, taken a look at uh, two career paths. Um, I've, I still always want to do ethical hacking depending on whatever career I choose. And I definitely want to, definitely don't want to go on to the dark side of that either. Yeah. Uh, with any black hat or anything like that. So I've been looking at, uh, like cyber, any sort of cybersecurity, uh, jobs or anything like that. Um, seeing if I can get a degree of some sort with that. Um, or I've also been looking at engineering, electrical or mechanical. Very so, cool. So you're talking sure. about, you're talking about career paths as future tense. So am I to understand that you are younger than 20? Uh, yes, I am. I'm actually in uh, grade 10. So high school here in Canada. So I still have a good bit of time, but just, <sighs> It kind of just goes to show that if I'm able to do this as a grade 10 student, then what does somebody with a lot more knowledge who's actually got a degree in this uh, can do if they wanted to, right? And the Canadian hacker, what this is, what this is revealing to me is that if you can do this and you can choose the, the moral road and ha- help people to secure their networks, What about the next grade 10 student? Like folks, I mean, there's a lot of people who just woke up and said, oh my goodness, like, and I apologize, the Canadian hacker, but you, some people are saying this is a kid. What we've learned here is that you could have used this exploit for, for malicious purposes and you haven't personally, but what about the next grade 10 kid? Yeah. Um, not not to necessarily hurt my own generation here, but there are not great people out there, especially of my age group. And if they so desire to do this, like, you know, the possibilities are almost endless. Yeah. yeah. And it doesn't and necessarily have to be printers, right? It uh, can be any sort of IoT device or anything connected to your network. Wow. Uh, Well, I encourage you, as we wrap up this interview, The Canadian Hacker, I encourage you to continue pursuing that positive path. There are a lot of cybersecurity companies out there that want people like you that can exploit systems for the good so that they can help patch them. And uh, and I encourage you to pursue that career path. Absolutely. And and keep up the great work in what you're doing. and And I hope that everything goes very, very well for you. Thank you. The Canadian Hacker, do you have any final words for us today as we close off our interview? Well, if I've hacked your printer, I'm sorry.